magical talk. And because it's a magical talk, I have brought a magical storybook along with me. Now, you might ask, what exactly is a magical storybook for? Well, you see, I've rigged up this magical little storybook to do something special. Every time I turn one of these pages, so who exactly am I? My name is Brandon Weaver, and I started out as an artist. And through a series of unfortunate accidents, I ended up becoming a developer. Now, how exactly does that happen, one might ask, which is a very fair question. You see, they started by saying HTML and CSS is very profitable. Web design is eventually going to be the next big thing. OK, I'll, I'll give it a try. Yeah, I get some good freelancing money off of this. OK. And then they're like, you know, add some JavaScript. That's how you diversify yourself. That's how you get more clients. OK, I like this idea. Like, OK, now we need to add a back. And like, no, 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 too late. It ended up spiraling out of control. And next thing I know, I end up as a frameworks engineer working on Ruby over at this place right here called Square, which is why I'm here today. But that's not exactly our story. And we have some contact information, which I keep on forgetting I put at that slide. But We'll ignore that for now. You can find this contact information at the end of the presentation, and on every slide you will find a link to my Twitter. So, shall we get started? Meet Red. You see, Red is a magical lemur, and I don't have my magical slide notes. I should probably fix that. Oh well, we'll, we'll go on. So, Red is a magical lemur, and he loves to reduce things, just absolutely adores it. And he's been getting really good at it to the point where he just adores seeing massive stacks of numbers and just loves, 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 loves reducing. But that raises the question, what exactly is reduce and how does reduce work? So let's take a look at this real quick. So reduce works with a couple of things here. We start out with a list and let's say that we want to get a sum. We could take the numbers one, two, and three and get back six, but how would that work exactly? So let's take this and put this in reduce, but that's scary. Whenever I started, I certainly didn't know what this was, and in some cases I still don't know what it was, but don't tell anyone, please. I rather like my job. <laughs> so let's take a little bit of a look into this real quick. So we start out with this thing called an accumulator. So what this is is an empty element. If you add anything to zero, you get back that number. One plus zero, one. Zero plus one, one. So it's very handy to reduce in this, because we have an empty list. What exactly are we going to return back as a sum? And that'll be in red. So the next thing we have here is our actual list. And these are our values. In this case, one, two, and three. You're going to get real comfortable with this list as we go on. And we're going to represent that as v up there. And next, we have join, which is how do we take a number in an accumulator and make a new accumulator? Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, what this looks like is we have zero plus a list one, two, or three. Or what you might be more familiar with is zero plus one plus two plus three. So how exactly is this working? Let's take another look at this. So we start with an accumulator of 0. And then we add to that the first value, which would be 1. And from there, we get back a new accumulator, which is going to be our first value, 1. Which means that that next loop around, we get back 1 as our accumulator, plus 2. So we get back a new accumulator of 3, which goes to our last one, 3 plus 3, which gives us back six as our final item. So this is rather boring, though, and I promised you an illustrated talk, so we're going to get into that. So to reduce is to take a list of many things and reduce it into one thing using an initial, often empty accumulator value, like a is zero, for instance, and a way to join those values together. So of course, now this makes us masters of functional programming. We've figured out everything. No spoilers, you. No, no fun. So. We figured out everything. We're masters of functional programming now. I mean, if we have this down, there's nothing that can really stop us, except as some of you are probably thinking here and staring at me wondering, there's this little nice function that Ruby 2.4 happened to introduce called sum, which kind of makes this entire talk useless, doesn't it? I mean, if sum exists, what in the world do we use reduce for? I mean, it's rather troubling, isn't it? So Red is equally troubled by this and decides to ask a very important question. Is reduce unnecessary? So being especially disturbed by this, Red decides to write a letter to his master and asks, does some kill reduce? Which is a very fair question. And then something magical happens. You see, Red gets a response back. And in that response, his master Scarlet writes to him and says, come visit if you wish to learn. So we're going to go on a bit of an adventure here.
So Red journeys over the rolling hills, over the plains, until eventually he gets to the mountains. And on those mountains, he finds a great and grand castle in the distance, the castle of his master, Scarlet. So Red starts telling Scarlet of all the miraculous things he's done and learned with Reduce, but he still has that nagging question. Is Reduce unnecessary? So Red asks, is, is Reduce unnecessary? Consider with me, Red, for a moment that perhaps you can do more with reduce than just summing. Perhaps you could use multiplication, division, subtraction. Maybe you don't even have numbers at all. Consider with me for a second what would happen if we had a list and we used push as our way to join elements. I wonder what we could do with this. I know just the thing for you, Red. We're going to send you on an adventure in the land of Enumerable, where you're going to learn from the masters of Enumerable of their functions, how you may implement them in Reduce. So with that, Red was off on a grand journey into the land of Enumerable to see what he could find from the masters there. So the first master he was to find was the master of math. So Red journeyed through the forests into the groves until eventually he found a mushroom house there at the end of the trail. And inside, he found Master Chartreuse, the master of map. And she had with her a lot of cats and was brewing a very strange potion. So Red had to ask, wise master, what are you working on there? Is it some grand form of alchemy? Why, no, young one, I'm working on dinner for my kitties. You see, they're ever so hungry, and I do need to prepare it. But master, how, how are you preparing the food? Why, I use MAP to transform the ingredients into something my kitties like. Could you teach me how MAP works? Why, of course. MAP works by taking an element and applying a function to it to get back a new value, such that we have our list of one, two, and three, and we MAP it to where we transform every element by multiplying it by two. So. In the case of one multiplied by two, we get back two. Two multiplied by two is four. And three multiplied by two is six, which gives us back an entirely new list of two, four, and six. So Red took a look at this and decided, let's try and implement this in Reduce and see how exactly this works. You see, to implement map, you need a few things. The first thing you need is a way to push elements into your new accumulator. And the second thing you need is to call a function on that value before you put it in your new list. So the function itself would look a little bit like this, but again, that's kind of scary. So let's break it down and take a look into what this is doing. So we start with our list here, which is now an input to our function map. And that list is going to have every element represented by V here in blue. And then we have our accumulator, which is now an empty array. So what we're going to do with that accumulator, as A right there, is we're going to push the result of calling that function on that value. So essentially, how map works is pushing values onto a new accumulator after calling a function on them, or in totality, kind of like that. So let's take a look at what that's actually doing if we call it. So unlike regular enumerable, you're actually calling this method with the array passed to it directly. You might wonder why I'm using this strange formatting. Well, slides are very scarce resources, so we do adapt. So we call this with a function, much like we would with the normal map of v times 2, and we get back a new list of 2, 4, and 6. But let's take a look into how that works. So we start out with an accumulator, in this case, is an empty array. And we push on to that the result of 1 applied to our function, which would be the same as calling it, which is multiplied by 2, which is going to give us back a new list containing just the element 2 which means that next loop, we have a list of two. We are pushing onto that two multiplied by two, which is going to give us a new list of two and four. So finally, we have a list of two and four, and we push onto that the result of three multiplied by two, giving us back our final list of two, four, and six. So let's take a look at this. To map is to apply a function to every element of a list to create a new list. To map with reduce is to apply a function before appending elements to a new list. So with that, Red was off to see the next master, the master of select. But as he got closer, strange things started happening, and there was this bizarre cat that started appearing everywhere in the woods, and he just wasn't sure until eventually he came across this strange tree. And he wasn't sure what was going on, but the cat was sitting there smiling. He was very disturbed by this. But there was a hat sitting there on the ground. And in lemur world, only magicians wore hats. So Red picks up this hat and looks around and says, is there a master here? 
And then the tree reaches down a branch and says, why, hello there. Yes, would you be so kind as to give me my hat back? Are you a magician? Why, yes, I am. I'm Master Branch. You see, the cat, he must have been cherry picking up there and couldn't commit to anything. So now I have to bisect it. No, 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 no. Come back, come back, come back. It's about at this point. The red noticed the hastily scrawled out beware tree sign and decided to avoid this strange cat. But as he got closer, things just kept getting stranger and stranger as he approached the master of select. And the cat was there again, and all of a sudden, everything was upside down, backwards, forward. He didn't know when the world was going on anymore. Then, from the distance, he just hears a mad cackling and this train rattling as he goes and enters the house at the end of the ride. <laughs> That blasted cat's at it again. Can you believe it? It's rearranged everything. I can't find a bloody thing. What's up with this? Uh, uh, master, are you okay? Oh, yes, I'm perfect. This is lovely. The cat's a brilliant thing, isn't it? Uh, is it a Cheshire cat? No, no, we call him the Escher cat here. Yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good. Very funny, you silly cat. So Red, obviously kind of disturbed by this, says, well, how in the world do you find anything in this bizarre place? Why would select, of course? You see, by using a function, I can find all the rubies in the entire room. How, how does that work, wise master? Let me show you real quick. So it's like a magic trick. I take in a number, one, and I check if it's even. And if it is, I get it back. But if not, poof, well, it's gone. Never to be seen again. We never talk about it. So let's take a look into select and how exactly this is working. So select works by using a function to decide which elements we should put in a new list. So, with each number, we check if it's even. One, one's not even. No, we don't like that. We throw it away. We get rid of it. Two, yes, that's exactly the type of number. I like it. It's a very pretty number. Don't you agree? And three, no, 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 no. We throw that away as well, which means we get back just a list of two. So, Red, a little bit stranged out by this, decided to pursue trying to implement this function using reduce. So, let's take a look into how that would look. So to do this, we would need to push an element onto the accumulator, but instead of applying the function to it by transforming that value, we're actually using the function to decide whether or not we should push an element into that list in the first place. But you'll notice something interesting here, is that with that accumulator, we have to return the accumulator again right after we do this. You might wonder why that is. Well, if you do that and if returns nil, well, now you're reducing into nil, and that doesn't work very well. I don't like nil. Nil scares me. Nil gives me nightmares. It's a very, very interesting thing. And some of you might wonder, why, why ever not are you using each with object? Well, each with object does not fit on slides, so here we are. We improvise. See, we're roll with it. So we're using this function to decide whether or not we should even push that element onto the list in the first place. So in totality, we have push a new value onto a list, but only if that function call happens to return true. So if we're checking the number's even, we only push that element into there if it happens to be even. And then in any case, we're returning back the empty list in case it doesn't work, and list with that value added if it does work. So it looks a little bit like this, but you might see it's called more like this, and it looks very similar to our map example, except now we're using the function to decide whether or not we should put an element in there in the first place. And like select, it's going to return back the value of two. So let's take a look into how exactly that's working. We start with an empty accumulator, and we're going to push onto that the value one, but only if that happens to be even. Since it's not, it means we get back an empty list, which means our next iteration round, we have an empty list, and we're pushing onto that the value two if that happens to be even, and since it is, we now have a list containing two, which means our final loop of reduce, we have a list of two as our accumulator, and we push onto that the value three, but only if that's even since it's not, that means that we just get back our list of two. So to select is to use a function to decide which elements belong in a new list, and to select with reduce is to use a function to decide whether or not an element belongs in a new list in the first place. So with that, Red was headed to the next master, the master of fine. But this, this was a very long journey, and I'm not a mean artist. I'm Really not, you have to trust me here. So we decided to draw Red a train to get him there. But for some strange reason, this train had taken a call on itself the Ruby on Rails, and Red had no idea why this was. It's very strange, isn't it? But it was a very lovely train. So Red journeys on to find the master of find, and he gets into the city of Violet, master inventor and finder of secrets. 
and of course the 418 teapot because I have horrible sense of humor, but we'll ignore that. So Red finds himself in the archives of the deepest libraries of the deepest academy, and in there he finally finds Violet, the master of find. So Red asks her, how, how do you find books in this massive library? There's so many places, so many things to see, it's just overwhelming. Why Red? I use a function to decide whether or not a book is the book I happen to be looking for. But if you find the book, do you just keep on going through all of your other books? No, how silly would that be that I keep on looking for a book I've already found? I'd much rather stop and sit down and read the book I've already found. There's no need to keep looking. Could you show me how find works, wise master? So Violet began to show Red how find worked. Find works much like select in that it uses a function to find an element in a list. But as soon as it finds that element, it stops looking or it returns nothing. There are ways to have a default here, but this is neither here nor there and not a lesson for today. So let's take a look into what find is doing here. So as I mentioned before, find works by taking a function and trying to find out what the element is that happens to be even. So in the case of one, it is not even, so we go on to two, and since it is even, that is the number we return, so we don't even bother to check three. So this was a very, very strange function. How in the world do you implement this in reduce? Well, as it turns out, Ruby has some cheats that we can use here. So with find, we need to break out of our loop with a value if we happen to find it, because if not, we're gonna keep on going through everything. And if we've already found what we're looking for, it doesn't make much sense to keep looking, now does it? But this is a very strange function. It's using the predicate, much like select, and breaking with that value, but how exactly is this working? Because this looks a lot like an each loop, doesn't it? Did, did we just implement each using reduce? Well, yes, and please don't ding me on code reviews for this. We'll pretend that didn't happen. I promise it'll pass muster. So in this function, it's very interesting that we're reducing into nothing. We don't even care about the accumulator. We can completely ignore it if we want to. Now, this is not exactly the way that you should use reduce, but you can if you really want to. So we're going to break out of the loop with a value, which is kind of like return inside of there, but only if that function call happens return true. And if it never does, we get back nothing. So to take a look into this, this looks a lot like our previous functions here, doesn't it? And that is going to return two, but only if that number happens to be even. So let's take a look into what exactly that's doing. So we start out by breaking out of that loop with the value one, if that happens to be even. Since it's not, we keep going. So we're gonna decide whether or not we're breaking with the value of two, if that happens to be even. And since it is, that means that we're going to return back the value of two, and we're not even gonna check three. So to find is to use a function to locate a single element in a list and then stop looking. To find using reduce is to reduce into nothing until an element matches a function, then to break out with that value, which is a mouthful, which is exactly why you should not actually do this in production code. <laughs> but this is a conference talk. I can get away with things here. So with that, Red was headed back to see his master, Scarlet, and explain all the things he'd learned. But on the road back, he found another set of lemurs, cerulean, saffron, and vermilion, and they were on the road all the same to see his master, and this was a very strange occurrence because no new lemurs really entered the land of innumerable. This was very special. So Red decided to ask, wise master, are, are you headed into the land of innumerable? What are you doing? Why, well, yes, I'm headed into the land of innumerable. You see, the council of 2.7 has potentially ordained a new function called tally by. They have implemented tally. We're still seeking to implement tally by, but Grandmaster Nobu still needs convincing on this matter. So we will endeavor. But who are the other two lemurs? Why are they here? They're my C extensions. You see, they make every trip go faster. They are quite enjoyable, but it is impossible to communicate with them unless I'm playing a ruby fiddle. And I have no idea why that is, but at least they'll listen to that. So Red, ignoring this and pretending he didn't just hear that, decides to keep on asking with what he was normally going to ask. So how exactly does tally work? How does tally by work? Could you show me what that is? Why, yes, I was looking forward to teaching. So 
Let's take a look at tallyby. Tallyby works by keeping counts of elements by using a function to decide how to count those elements, such as if we're counting elements by, say, if they happen to be even or not. If we check that one happens to be even, it's false, so we would have a count of false here. So to take a look at that, let's take a look into tallyby. Tallyby works much like other functions by taking a predicate in that it's checking if numbers happen to be even, but it is using this function to decide how counts work. So for one, it happens to not be even, so that gives us one count of false. For two, it happens to be even, which gives us one count of false and one count of true. For three, that happens to be odd, so we will also get another count of false, giving us back a hash containing one value of true and two values of false. This was a very interesting function, but red, red had only been reducing into nil and arrays, and this was very strange, wasn't it? Reducing into a hash, how would this work? So to take a look into that, we would start out by doing a new accumulator. And what this is, is making a new hash explicitly with the default value of zero. So if you try and add anything to a key it doesn't know about, you're gonna get back zero. So you can use it kind of like a counter. But if we were to keep with the same pattern as we had before and follow strict adherence of functional programming, you would end up with a function which looks kind of like this to actually do that. Now, this scares me, this terrifies me, and I never want to see it again. So we're going to pretend that slide doesn't exist. And we're going to cheat because Ruby is not truly a functional language, so we have these options to mutate things, which is exactly what we're going to do. So instead, we're going to find out what the key we're counting on is by transforming a value with a function, kind of like what we're doing with map. And then we're going to take our new hash and at that key that we just found, we're going to add one count to that. So all in all, it would look a little bit like this, but let's break that down again. So we derive our key by calling a function kind of like map. So if one happens to not be even, it's going to return false. So then we're going to take our accumulator, which is now a hash, and say add one to that value. So how exactly that would work? It looks a lot like our other functions and that it takes in an array and a function and returns back a hash. So just to step through this, and I do apologize because slide realty is such, such a finite space, we're gonna cheat a little bit. So we start out with no counts and our first value is one which happens to be false. So we're gonna add one count to false, which means now we have a new counts that we're gonna pass the next accumulator of false of one which means we start with false of one and we're going to see the next element two, which happens to be true when applied to that function, which means we're gonna add one count to true. So now we have counts of false of one and true of one. So that means for our last one, we're gonna have counts of false of one and true of one. And with our last element three, that's odd as well. So that means that we're going to add one more count to false, which is gonna give us back our final result of two false elements and one true element. So to take a look into it, tallyby is counting elements of a list after you apply a function to them, kind of like map. Tallyby with reduce is using a hash to keep counts of values transformed by a function, so kind of like map. So with that, Red was headed back to visit his master and tell of everything he had learned. So Red began to explain all of his journeys in the land of innumerable and all the magical things he had seen. Just look at all the new functions I've learned. But I still have to ask, even after all this, it seems like I've just re-implemented functions which already exist, haven't I? Does this mean I should use reduce for everything? Or is reduce unnecessary? Red, consider with me for a moment. Would you use an ax to trim a bonsai tree? Well, no, that would be rather silly, wouldn't it? It's way too much. Exactly, much like this. Reduce is a very powerful tool, but whenever one already exists that does the same function, we should use it gladly and with rejoicing. Likewise, would you use a pair of hedge trimmers to trim a mighty redwood tree? Does this mean I get to get prune? Quiet, you. Likewise, there are some situations where map select and other functions do not have enough power to do what you need to do, so you might need something more. Such are the ways of reduce that we must be pragmatic and find which situations make sense and which situations do not. But that is not what you're asking, young one. Let's take a look into some of the true powers of reduce. And there are grand powers here, arts of currying closures, 
transducers, category theories, and more beyond your wildest dreams. Just imagine the amount of things that any function can be implemented and reduce. So perhaps even we could combine them for such things as combining select and map, and that we use a function to transform an element and also use that result to decide whether or not we should add something to a new list. But I get carried away because you've traveled far and learned much, and these are all lessons for another day. So, Red, with that, I believe that this journey is done, and I would much like to see where you get on your next journey. But I am so proud of you and everything you've learned on your journey and look forward to seeing where you get in the future. So with that, Red decided it was time to journey home. He learned so much in the land of innumerable, and that was the real beauty of programming, is finding new things, exploring, meeting new people, finding people to laugh with, cry with, share stories, share inside jokes that no one understands because they're beautiful. And that to him was the real joy of programming. Not only did Ruby bring him joy, but all the people had brought him joy as well. And that was the most beautiful part of all. So to wrap up, this talk took me roughly 200 hours, about 141 slides, and a lot of learning how to draw on an iPad. <laughs> you can find examples, tests, and resources at the following directory and my contact information here, but you might have noticed something interesting, as I'm sure Matt's has noticed in the slide deck because I asked him quite a while ago if I could use his likeness in this presentation. He was very confused by this and initially said, yes, you may use my official portrait. So I decided to clarify and sent him an image to which he said, okay, this is fine. <laughs> so you might have noticed the foxes from Why the Lucky Stiff hiding in there as well. You see, Why the Lucky Stiff was my first foray into Ruby and it was a magical adventure much like the one we've just taken. And I really adored that. And I wanted to share some of that sense of whimsy and this is just going to prove Whimsy is not dead in Ruby, it's still very much alive and very much appreciated. Otherwise, they'd probably be dragging me off the stage, kicking and screaming, it wouldn't be pretty, no, 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 no. You might have also noticed the bundler tape gun hiding itself and DHH hiding as a conductor of the Ruby on Rails, to which I got another very, very amusing email reply. <laughs> I'll have to ask if I'm allowed to share that later. <laughs> but that's about all we have for today. And I got through that without a single drink of water. Now that's impressive, conference speaking. <laughs> that one doesn't count. So questions, questions, questions. I believe we have time for questions. Or have I gone horribly over? Yes, I have about 15 minutes. Ooh, wow, I did go fast. That's what I get for not having a timer or notes. How is the book work indeed? <laughs> we are not to mention the book because I get in trouble for mentioning the book now. No, no, the magic book is always going to remain a secret. Would you like to see the magic book? Try and find out if you can figure out the secret of the magic book. I'll wait. Next question. Someone's going to have to raise their hand a little bit higher because I am completely blind over here. Yes. So there are cases to where I have to use reduce to do something which is just outside of the realm of what map or select or find or another enumerable function will actually do for me. Before tally by, I very frequently use basically that same code up there to write count by functions or tally by functions. We actually had a lot of talk back and forth on the name of this, which was kind of predicated by, we already have a count method, we can't have a count by method because they don't do the same thing. Okay, fair. So now we have a tally method, which is actually officially in Ruby 2.7, and a tally by method, which I'm still hopefully convincing people of. We'll see. <laughs> but yes, it's a lot of judgment as far as when do you actually need this type of power, and it's not a very clear answer. I'm still working on figuring that out myself, but it's nice to know that you have this if you actually need the metaphorical chainsaw. Where did I learn my storytelling? You see, I grew up with a lot of teachers and storytellers and musicians as parents and artists. So a lot of this was stuff that I had kind of given to me over years and years and years. And one of the things that I just really like to say is that writing is an extremely important part of programming and that so many people will say, you don't need to worry about writing, it's all about your hard skills, your hard skills. I'm like, 
No, writing is beautiful. Writing is how we explain the world. Writing is how we say so many beautiful stories, give so many beautiful tales. And art is how we can make it in a crazy picture book and give it to a presentation. And then make a horrible pun at the end about a fish lemur. OK, so that was more of a commentary that Reduce is really useful for reducing large blocks of code into small blocks of code, which is a lot of what I've used it for. The only problem is I can never think up a live example whenever someone asks me that question. And I promise I'll eventually get to that and add that to the code examples. But the other nice thing about Reduce is technically you've just learned what recursion was, because Reduce is very similar to tail call recursion, which is very, very valuable for other functional languages. But the other trick is that technically you already learned what category theory is as well, because I'm very sneaky and don't use actual words for what things are, but I'll tell you later, just for fun. Oh yes, some people know what exactly what I just did there. <laughs> but I believe we have time for one more question, if we have one. So what, what, what became of that? So a lot of the things that I do to Ruby are either considered brilliant or horrible madness, and that's exactly how I know I'm doing the right things. So there was one article I wrote about the recent numbered params that Matt's had mentioned yesterday that ended up getting, on one hand, very glowing reviews from the Elixir, the Kotlin, the Scala, and the other communities of functional programming that already have a feature similar to this. And from the languages which don't, how dare you? You re-implemented Perl, this is ugly, this is horrible, and everything else. Like, easy people, easy, this is a language feature, calm down. <laughs> Naming is hard, be nice. So for the destructuring thing specifically, I'll post a link to that because that is a very, very long topic that I definitely do not have time to explain today. But I like to try new and different things in Ruby just to see if they work. And sometimes they do and sometimes they fail horribly. More often they fail horribly. So whenever I find something like that, I write a blog post and share it. And then I watch Reddit lose their ever-loving minds on it, which is <laughs> hilarious to me. It's beautiful. Yes, especially because Escher Cat is a nice Dusek Machina. And it's not cat, it's actually creature augmenting time and space. So Escher Cat is my ability to do literally anything in the land of innumerable, in which case we might well have an adventure into category theory with Alice in Wonderland coming up, but that is going to be a lot of work. We also have another illustrated musical adventure that's going to be at RailsConf, which I need to prepare for very quickly. <laughs>